Oh, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions today. I am uh, Pastor Sutton drowning in snot. So my apologies. We're going to do through the we're going to do the nose blowing thing all the whole time. I have been since I got up this morning just running. And I can't help it. I just and now my nose is sore. Yesterday I was feeling great and by uh by mid-afternoon, I thought, I'm done, I'm free. Um, and then last night, I started to congest again, and I woke up four or five times in the middle of the night drowning. Oh, good morning. I pray that you are feeling better than I am today. That's my prayer for you this morning. Even the color of my cameras is wrong. I look all washed out like I'm under blue light. Um, and I, I, I have everything set right. I've got my lights here are normal warm lights, but everything blue. I don't know. Maybe I'm affecting everything else. <coughs> Good morning. Glad you're here with us. Spend a little time in God's Word on this Wednesday morning. Midweek Advent services at many churches. St. Paul here in Irma. We'll be having theirs at uh, 7 o'clock this evening, midweek service. Got catechism uh, at 4.30 before that. And uh, tomorrow, uh, midweek at uh, Faith and Harshot at uh, 4.30 in the afternoon. Midweek service. I, I, you know, some churches have done away with them, but I think midweek is important. I think it gives us a, an opportunity uh, during the season of Advent to look at a, at a topic or a subject or a, a group of readings um, separate from the, from the Sunday readings and focus in on, on, uh, on, on, on that. And I think, that's a, I, think that's, I think that's a good thing. I'm doing a series, Prophet, Priest, King, and Savior um, for the four the four Wednesdays in Advent. Some guys are only doing three. They're only doing them in the Wednesdays of December. Uh, but I started on the first of December uh, with the first midweek service. So I, whatever your church is doing, God's blessing. I, I think if 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 you are doing one, it's be thankful that your pastor is taking the time, the extra effort to uh, uh, to share that additional uh, preaching with you. It's what we're here for. It's our job. Right? That's first thing on our call document is to uh, um, preach, teach, and administer the sacraments. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, get down to the to to what we're doing here today. Uh, let's see who's as if I can focus. Let's see who's here today through my aching eyes. Deb and Grant and Ann, good morning to you guys. Jerry, good morning. 44. Well, that's nice over there. Uh, there's my warning comment. Uh, Bob and Jeannie, good morning to you guys. Okay, where'd everybody go? It jumped. Bob and Jeannie, good morning. Renee, good morning to you. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Kathy, good morning. Mushtak, good evening. There's Bonnie piping in. 19 degrees and cloudy. It is here. Um, yeah, Zan is, Zan is doing better, and I think I'm a day or two behind him, and maybe... Maybe today is just the last hurrah of this thing, but oh, I would like nothing more than to sit down in my chair and, and sleep, but that's not going to happen today. All right. Oh, hey, Kendra, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. <clears throat> keep the coffee going to keep things open here. Um, so, if you have the Lutheran service book, uh, we use daily prayer for individuals and families the morning order each day here that's where we where we make our where where we enter into this uh, time of of uh, well of worship and remembrance in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Amen. in the morning O lord you hear my voice in the morning i prepare a sacrifice for you and watch my mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hey, Sharon, good morning. 
our soap. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Uh, uh, we do have a commemoration today, and it's it's kind of an important one. The hymn connects with it that we began with. Um, Ambrose of Milan, pastor and hymn writer. Born in Trier in 340 A.D. Um, not too different from the time that uh, yesterday. Uh, not too different from Nicholas's time. Nicholas was 342, was his death. Uh, and uh, what did I say? Ambrose was uh, born in 340. So Ambrose was born two years before um, uh, Nicholas passed away or, was, or, or died. Uh, so Ambrose, one of the four great Latin doctors of the church. Okay, so we include Ambrose with Augustine and uh, Jerome and Gregory, Gregory the Great as the great Latin fathers of the church. Um, he was prolif a prolific author of hymns, uh, the most common of which is Vini Redemptor Genitum, uh, Savior of the Nations Come, which was the hymn uh, that we began with today, hymn 332 in our service book, one of my favorite hymns. I'm not even going to talk. I was, I, my mouth was about to open. I was about to sing the first line of it. I'm not going to do it because with this, it's not going to go well. Um, his name is also associated with Ambrosian chant, a style of chanting the ancient liturgy that took hold in the province of Milan. While serving as a civil governor, Ambrose sought to bring peace among Christians in Milan who were divided into quarreling factions. When a new bishop was to be elected in 374, Ambrose addressed the crowd and someone cried, Ambrose Bishop! The entire gathering gave their support. This acclaim of Ambrose, a 34-year-old catechumen, led to his baptism on December 7th, which, after which he was consecrated Bishop of Milan. A strong defender of the faith, Ambrose convinced the Roman Emperor uh, uh, Gratian in, in 379 to forbid the Arian heresy in the West. Uh, to At Ambrose's urging, Gratian's successor, Theodosius, also publicly opposed Arianism. Uh, Ambrose died on Good Friday, April 4, 397. As a courageous doctor and musician, he upheld the truth of God's word. Um, and just a uh, so that's Ambrose. Just a side note, Ashley. Good morning. Uh, just a side note, Arianism is that idea that the Father and the Son were not of the same substance, um, and that the Son was created by the Father. Um, that the Son is not co-eternal with the Father, but that is simply not what is shown in the Scriptures. In the, in the creation narrative and in John's gospel, as the Father speaks, the Son creates. Uh, he is The Son is the word which is spoken. Oh, yuck! Running down. Sorry. I, I, I really do apologize, but I can't, I can't live and die at the same time here. Um, all right. Back to the back to the course of what we're doing here. Psalm 25 this morning. Psalm 25, verses 1 through 7. Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Yes, I do. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed, who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your path, your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, in your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of of your goodness, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, will be forever. Amen. Um, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. We have, they shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. We have a, a promise from God through Christ, um, and it's one 
that uh, will not be we will not be ashamed of, right? I mean, it's it's easy for the world to accuse us of things, uh, of of silliness and and uh, uh, good morning, Verna, of of uh, believing in mythical things. It's easy for an unbeliever to say those things. Um, those who are wantonly treacherous, those who are turned away from God and hating Him. But you and I have this promise, the promise of Christ Jesus. And on the last day, when our day comes, we will not be ashamed. Um, and so we call on the Lord to continue to teach us through his word, uh, through his gifts, through his preachers and teachers and pastors who faithfully teach us. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, for I wait for you all the day long. And today I wait particularly. Um <laughs> So remember your mercy and your steadfast love. They have been from of old, from the beginning, right? God was, uh, God was forgiving to Adam and his children. He has been forgiving to all of Adam's children up until today, even to the point of in, in, in you know the, the the turn of the of the age, if you will, uh, in the birth of Christ. Um, uh, he has he has forgiven us our sins through through Christ. Um, that's not out of anything we've done, but out of His steadfast love. His chesed is the Hebrew, um, and that's His that's that's His uh, compassion for those in His creation. Um, remember not the sins of my youth, or the myth, or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. Right? Don't remember me because of my sins, Lord. Remember me because of, of your love for me. It is John, St. John in his gospel, who tells us that God is love, and it's his love that gives us life. Let's move on. Um, I'm dying. I, I just can't even believe how much is coming out here. Um... Our, if you can't take this, don't be afraid to turn away. I thought about just turning the camera down to the book, and, and you could hear all this, but you wouldn't see any of it. Um, Isaiah 24, verses 1 to 13. Thank God it's short today. Um, and it wasn't this bad before you guys got here. Did you do this? Is, is this because of you? I can't even wear my glasses because my eyes are running. I can't see. Isaiah 24, 1 through 13. Behold, the Lord will empty the earth and make it desolate. He will twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants. It shall be with his, as with it, the people, so with the priest, as with the slave, so with his master, as with a maid, so with her mistress, as with a buyer, so with the seller, as with a lender, so with the borrower, as with the creditor, so with the debtor. The earth shall be utterly empty and utterly plundered, for the Lord has spoken his word. The earth mourns and withers, the world languishes and withers. The highest people of earth languish, the earth lies defiled under its inhabitants. For they have transgressed the laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore a curse devours the earth, and its inhabitants suffer for their guilt. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are scorched, and few men are left. The wine mourns, the vine languishes, and all the merry-hearted sigh. The mirth of the tambourine is stilled, the noise of the jubilant has ceased. The mirth of the lyre is stilled. No more do they drink wine with singing. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. The wasted city is broken down. Every house is shut up so that none can enter. There is an outcry in the streets for lack of wine. All joy has grown dark. The gladness of the earth has banished. is banished. Desolation is left in the city. The gates are battered into ruins. For thus it shall be in the midst of the earth among the nations, as when an olive tree is beaten, as, it, as at the gleaning when the grape harvest is done. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Hey, Mike. Good e uh, Good morning. Oh, yeah, the coffee. I'm guessing you went to coffee. Um, you always take us along. You're in. It's on the phone. Um. Oh, I forgot to hit record. Son of a gun. <sighs> Friends, this is judgment. Um, God is having Isaiah speak forth the judgment that will come on the last day. Uh, the Lord will empty the earth and make it desolate, twisting the surface and scattering the inhabitants, and it shall be as with the people, so with the priest. And then he goes through all these social positions. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what earthly authority you have or what position you have. If at the end you are here, you suffer, and, and the end will come. Um, the earth, utterly empty, utterly plundered. Um, <laughs> the earth lies defiled under its inhabitants. They have transgressed the laws, the statutes, the everlasting covenant, and the curse devours the earth. And maybe that's a good word to have come forth here um, on, on as in this time of Advent, right? Because we, we sing about um, the curse that is until Christ comes, that, that Christ comes to break the curse. Because in him there is no curse, but outside of him is only the curse. <laughs> what we don't like to think about, and what we need to know, recognize, is that from the fall into sin, from the from the time that that Adam uh, turned away from God, that Adam sought to be his own God. Uh, if you eat the fruit, it will make you wise like God, knowing good and evil. From that time, um, everything that is or will come to be has been under the curse. It is slated for God's wrath. Um, in the moment that that Adam and Eve betrayed their father, our father, their heavenly father, um, his wrath fell upon them. If you eat of the tree in the center of the garden, you will die. In the moment they ate of it, they became spiritually dead, turned away from God, hating God, despising him. And at that point, God sentenced, if you will, everything in creation to destruction. Out of his steadfast love, out of his mercy, he did not destroy everything immediately. Um, in a place it's written, he passed over former sins, anticipating the coming of his son. But when the time has come, and for us, it is a blessing because that time is not fixed, in our in our knowing, right? Only God, only the Father knows. Um, Christ, according to His uh, nature on earth, His humbled nature, said, "Even the Son doesn't know." Um, but on the last day, everything will be destroyed. There are those that that want to say, "Well, if we could just, if we could just be good and love our neighbor, then we would make." The world a perfect place and God would return. No, I'm, I'm sorry, that's not scriptural. Um, what is revealed to us in Isaiah and in the book of Revelation and to some degree in the book of Daniel is that on the last day, on that great and awesome day, everything's destroyed uh, to be created anew. Um, that's why it's a new heaven and a new earth, a new creation for us to live in. Um, those uh, inhabitants that remain will also die. I mean, everybody everybody dies at, at, at the end. Anyone who's living dies. Um, 
but as as it draws near we're almost given this image here from Isaiah that as it <clears throat> as it draws near um, the few men are left wine mourns the vine languishes right the wine the wine turns bitter strong drink bitter to those who drink it the merry hearted sigh mirth and tambourines are stilled the noise of the jubilant ceases mirth and the lyre is stilled everything becomes silent the city wasted city is broken down and every house shut up that no one can enter and there's a cry in the streets for a lack of wine and and that image that's that's imagery lack of wine is the lack of joy wine is for man's joy the psalmist says um, all joy has grown dark the gladness of the earth is banished desolation is left in the city and the gates are battered to ruin <clears throat> thus it shall be in the midst of the earth among the nations like when the olive tree is beaten which is how they get the last olives off the tree as it as at the gleaning when the grapes harvest is done right everything's done everything is destroyed nothing left you and i my brothers and sisters in christ you and i look here and because of christ we have nothing to fear we live in him and so even as that great and terrible day comes and those who are outside of christ are in fear you and i lift up our heads for we know our redemption draws near now, were that to come during our lifetimes we have nothing to fear right wars and tumults and uh, shaking of the earth and floods and all these other things will come the lord says do not be afraid do not be led astray do not be afraid so these are the signs and they must take place before the end and then christ returns amen let's look to our prayer of the day let us pray oh god you gave this, your servant Ambrose grace to proclaim the gospel with eloquence and power. As bishop of the great congregation of Milan, he fearlessly bore reproach for the honor of your name. Mercifully grant to all bishops and pastors such excellence in preaching and fidelity in ministering your word, that your people shall be partakers of the divine nature. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's interesting to me, just a side point here, um, if you were paying attention when I was talking about Ambrose, um, he was the uh, uh, mayor, um, governor of um, the province of Milan, um, and when they called for him to be a bishop um, at a public the public outcry for him to be bishop, he hadn't even been baptized. He was a, a believer in God, but he had not yet been baptized. And so when they called for him to be bishop, um, he was he was still a catechumen. Um, he was still learning the faith. And, and uh, in, in days past, um, if you weren't baptized in the church as an infant, well, still today, we catechize before baptism, prior to baptism. We make sure you understand at least the essentials of the faith before being baptized. And a lot of times in the church in the 300s, when the church is just coming out of its persecution, um, that practice was, was more intense. And usually there was a year or two of instruction before you were baptized into the faith. Um, but he was baptized and became a strong defender of that same faith that you and I hold. All right. Just a thought as I was going along there. Let's continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You know, we are bold to pray, oh, we pray that. Our, our prayer for this Wednesday morning. Holy Father, thank you for your gracious and precious gift of family. I rejoice in the laughter and tears, knowledge and learning, sorrow and joy, happiness and peace, forgiveness and love that fill my home. Teach me to treasure my time with each person you have given to me. Cause me to appreciate how fearfully, wonderfully, intricately, and uniquely you have made each of them. Help me not to take for them for granted, but to cherish them. Bless all marriages. Give husbands and wives the gifts to, of clear communication, faithfulness, integrity, honor, and forgiveness. With each passing day, allow them to keep their marriage vows and continually grow in love for you and for each other. In times of sorrow and joy, help them to give support and encouragement to each other so that they may enjoy true, rewarding, and lasting companionship. If you have given them the precious gift of children, grant these parents your patience, strength, and wisdom to raise their children to know, fear, and love you. May all marriages reflect the relationship Christ has with us, his bride, the church. Grant me your grace and favor. Let me extend the same charity, mercy, forgiveness, and love to my family and friends that you have given to me in Christ Jesus, my dear Savior. Show me how to live in peace and unity with them, so we may give glory to you. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with all of those who are sick or suffering in body, mind, or soul, especially, dear Lord, I ask for your strength for this poor soul on this day, but also for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Ezra, Deanna, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant them strength and faith, uh, comfort and suffering, and strength and assurance through your Son. This in his name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that concludes our devotions for today. Thank you, Renee. I appreciate that. Um, I think I've got one of those colds where, you know, if you were to call a doctor, you'd say, well, I've got a great cure for you. Um, if you if you don't want it, you should be over in the cold in 14 days. Um, but if you'd like to take this, it'll take two weeks. 14 days, two weeks. And I'm coming up on two weeks, I think. Uh, so hopefully this is, like I said, I thought last night I was done. But today is just like, boom, again. So, all right. God's peace be with you. Uh, and we will see you back here tomorrow, Thursday morning, for our daily devotions together. God's peace.